For most classic heavy metal fans, and for even some Slayer fans, they will say that Divine Intervention was the album in which Slayer's music started to take a little bit of a turn in the 1990s. It had been four years since the last album, and there are many reasons that have been posed as to why this is. Some of them, I feel, do have a little bit of weight, but while others, I think, need to be considered. For one, we need to start with the fact that the record label was starting to pressure Slayer a little bit more to write hit songs, and this is really after the past couple of albums that Slayer has produced has at least had one or two songs that have gotten some pretty major attention. We also need to remember, though, that it's been four years since Seasons in the Abyss, and there is a new game in town, that game being Grunge. So, Slayer essentially said, screw you, we're not doing that. Instead, here are the songs that we have, and this is what we're fucking going to use. Yeah, this is an album that was constructed literally after four years of hating life, and drew a lot of inspiration from television, from serial killers, Rush Limbaugh, governments, it's crazy. It's a very vast very vast uh, line of influences, including Jeffrey Dahmer, which we're going to talk about here in a little bit. So why is it that this album seems to have the stigma that it does? Why does it seem that this is the disc where most fans say that Slayer started to dilapidate and delineate a little bit into something a little bit different than what they were? Why does it not find the same favor as the first five, which are considered by most to be bonafide legendary, a run that, that has been really kind of reproduced only certain periods of time by certain bands in history. Whenever you listen to this disc, there is an exposure that the mix and the production value of this was pretty poorly constructed. It's one that feels very, very uneven. It's to the point where the band themselves, not just the fans, but the band themselves also said that this would be the album that they really wouldn't mind remastering, either that or really... They, they wish that it would have been combed over with a little bit more care whenever the album was being put through. Chances are, based around those first meetings, telling them that these are the fucking songs we're using, may have gone into that, but it's just a theory. But at any rate, this is an album that definitely feels a bit disjointed on that, but in a way, there are some moments where that disjoint actually causes a... God, this is exactly what you would want if you were Slayers, I guess what I'm saying. It is actually a positive as opposed to a negative. Uh, really, the material here is just what isn't quite as strong as on the previous albums. It's one where it really exposed that the very rushed, very chaotic feel to the first couple of albums that Slayer produced, like Show No Mercy and Hell Awaits, that really chaotic style of vocals where it seemed that Tom was just rushing his thoughts to death and it felt very uneven with the music. It really showcased the razor's edge that really made it work on those first two albums, but didn't exactly have the same results on Divine Intervention, because the opening couple of numbers on this track just kind of rushes themselves to death a little bit, and does not have as favorable of a sound to it, which could actually be because of the mixing and production. So I already see some of the counter-arguments as they're coming forward. But this is also a disc I feel that is ripe with a couple of missed opportunities, and the one that really stares me directly in the face is the title track, Divine Intervention, which begins with just a fantastic, almost sludgy-style riff. This is one that had a great groove to it, a great backbone to it, and just really seemed like it was going to really launch into something really, really unsettling, eerie, very, you know, very moving that was going to kind of take you on a sadistic journey. And whenever Tom's lyrics hit, and the music actually goes into a quicker tempo, a quicker pace, it actually kind of ruins everything that the previous minute and a half had just built to. And it's a real letdown, it's a real disappointment, because that would have been a concept that would have been really unique, and not only for Slayer, but would have been really unique for this album to really plop the longest song right there in the middle and just have it be something out of control and absolutely, 100%, genuinely insane. But then we get to 213, which is, of course, the apartment number of Jeffrey Dahmer. There are still some tricks that this album had up its sleeve, and this is one of them, considering, uh, as many people have stated, and I kind of agree, it's almost like a love song to Jeffrey Dahmer, and it's a love song to the killing and everything like that, but it showcases exactly what Divine Intervention could have had. So they could have had two songs on this disc that had that very eerie, very strange atmosphere that surrounded it, something that was a little bit out of place for a Slayer disc that actually would have been experiments that would have worked nicely, because with 213, I feel it works absolutely perfectly. 
It builds it builds the character of the story. It builds Jeffrey and really does so from his perspective. It really showcases Dahmer's insecurities. It really showcases his desire not to be left alone and to have a friend. I just need a friend. These are words that sound so strange coming out of Slayer's mouth, but instead, whenever you put it into the context, are actually just brilliantly sinister and really leave you with that creepy, crawly feeling that is exactly what they wanted. Overall, this album isn't terrible. I think that this album gets a really, really bad reputation, and I think it gets a lot of grief because of how great the first five are. And in the long run, this one just doesn't feel like it has that same punch or that same zip. It's instead one where it feels like the songs are just about average as opposed to really blowing you away. It's a disc that I think gets a bit of a bad reputation also, simply because there were a lot of moments during this time frame where Slayer and their record company weren't really getting along all of that much. And in the four years that had passed, a lot of different things had changed, which means that some of the demands were a little bit different, and that could include what happened with the mixing and the production. So overall, this is an album that feels more so like the victim of circumstance, the victim of a transforming age in music where no longer thrash is considered to be king. And this is definitely an album that feels like it's been sacrificed on its behalf. The disc itself isn't all that bad. The material is just, it's just average. You know, some songs are above average. There are others that are just blah. So overall, this was Slayer's first stinker. So it's a recovery process. And honestly, between you and me, I really don't think it's all that bad. I think it's one that should definitely be given a shot. And I think there's actually a lot of people out there that never listened to it because of the bad reputation that was posed behind it that would actually probably like it. And even if they didn't like all of it, they would probably like at least a couple of tracks from it. Slayer, though, was going to go down an even darker path. It was going to be one where they were going to try to do something a little bit different and then definitely experimented with their sound. The next two albums are probably one of the main reasons why Slayer's reputation kind of went downhill. It's finally time for us to talk about them. It's finally time for us to talk about Undisputed Attitude and then Diabolus and Musica. So you're going to want to stick around. You're going to want to stay right here because those are coming up. <laughs> 